It's been about six months since I last did a garden tour of my garden here in Ireland. Well, to celebrate spring, let's have a proper look around, see what's changed and have a spring garden tour. Hey everyone, how's it going and welcome back. It's spring, finally, and the weather's starting to get better here in Ireland. The days are getting really nice, the days are getting longer, and that means that plants are really starting to kick into action again. Not just those winter flowering plants and those spring bulbs that are able to push up really, really early in the year. So there's no better time to show you around the garden and have a proper garden tour. Because what I realised is I've done garden tours before, but you've never seen the garden with most of the trees bare and without leaves. So I think that'll be really cool to show you. Also, I've been doing a huge amount of work over the winter. Some of it you've seen, some of it you haven't. So I'm really excited to show you around. And the final thing is that I've had quite a lot of questions from you guys asking exactly what the layout is of the garden. So rather than just showing you the different areas that I have, I'm going to actually explain to you exactly where everything is so that you have a much better idea. And there's no better place to start than here the front driveway. So the plot of land that we live on is just about an acre and the front is about a third of an acre before you get to the house with the rest at the back of the house. So the driveway comes pretty much down the middle of the garden, very roughly. And on this side we have the main front garden and on this side we have the secret garden hidden behind the cypress hedging. We'll come back to, to that later. So let's have a wander around. We'll start in the front garden and I'll show you how it's looking at the minute. So when you come down the driveway, you turn right and it brings you into here, the front garden and the first space that I'm going to show you now. It's a lovely simple space, one great big lawn and big mature deciduous trees around the edge. Now what's been great about that is during the winter it's been surprisingly low maintenance. All I've had to do are a few little bits here and there to keep things looking tidy, but the grass doesn't really grow during the winter. Nothing else really needs huge amounts of care. So despite it being a big space, it really kind of looks after itself. Now, let's have a quick talk about what there is in the garden. We've got a wedding cake tree closest to us, which I really, really love. Behind it then, we've got big, big multi-stem silver birch trees. And then round on the other side, we have a clump of three maples. One of them's a lovely dark purpley red maple with the other two being variegated ones. And then we have a large ornamental crab apple. And then underneath it, it's got some ferns. Uh, there's a couple of little conifers and some other plants dotted around. Now, not everything has been a huge success in the front garden. I have a big failure that I have to confess to you. It's over here, so let's have a look. Okay, let's address the failure, which is these, my echiums. If you're a long time subscriber, you'll know that at the back end of last summer, I planted these here because they'd been given to me by a friend. I planted up five little echium plants that have been given by a friend. I say little, but check them out now. So what I'm hoping is that I can get them now through the autumn and the winter because they are a little bit tender and then next year we'll have some flowers. Well, unfortunately, this is the same echiums, not exactly looking great. I did everything I could to try and get them through the winter and protect them from the cold, but we've actually had quite a cold winter for Ireland and we did have a few days of snow. Despite covering them with horticultural fleece at night when it was going to be cold, one of the times that we had the snow, it dumped so much snow that it pressed all the horticultural fleece onto the plants. It gave them no insulation and they got really, really frozen. Sadly, I think most of them need to come up, if not all of them. This one here and this one have just the tiniest little hint of green. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe I can get them through, but unfortunately it's really not looking good. It hasn't put me off growing them. I think they're really gorgeous. But what I think I will do this year is if I grow them again, I'm going to grow them in pots so that I can bring them in and protect them during the winter. It's not all bad news. Let's talk about this beautiful specimen of a tree, which is my wedding cake tree, also known as the very cool sounding Cornus controversa variegata. 
cool names aside, this is a really brilliant tree to have and it's really special to me. I always loved them, but when I realized that there was one of them in the garden, I realized that this was the place I wanted to be. I kind of took it as a bit of a sign. Now, I know that loads of people talk about trees or plants as having all year round interest. Well, this really, truly has all year round interest. It's got an amazing form to begin with. Everything grows on these horizontal layers of leaves and branches rather than vertical or at an angle, which means that it does stand out already as being something just a little bit different. But then the leaves themselves are variegated. They're white and a very pale green, which makes the whole tree really stand out. It's a very pale color and it really does stand out against everything else that there is here. Then. When the leaves fall in the winter, you're left with this beautiful skeletal form. Pale grey bark on the main trunk and the branches, and then each of these little branches that bear the leaves is bright red, and it stays bright red all the way through the winter. Then it starts to break into leaf, and it happens really quickly. It almost feels like you can see it happening before your eyes. Those buds start to swell, they turn green, and then they burst into leaf. All of this has happened in only the last five or six days. Now you can see the leaves have started and in the center of those, there's these little clumps of what will be white clustered flowers. This is such a brilliant all-rounder. I absolutely love it and it makes me happy every time I see it, which is probably why I'm talking about it so much. If you don't have one, I totally recommend getting yourself one. So behind the wedding cake tree, we have our three silver birch trees, which I absolutely love. Truthfully, I think I love them more when they don't have their leaves on because then you can see and you can admire that really bright bark. I think it looks class. At the moment, we're having to share the trees with the crows. The crows that you can hear in the background now and the doubtless you're going to hear in the background the whole way through this episode. And that's because it's nesting time for the crows. And although they don't nest in our garden, they nest in the nearby trees. And what they like to make their nests out of, seemingly almost exclusively, our little branches from our birch trees. So for the last few weeks, they have diligently been working through our trees, ripping off little twigs and branches. It's not ideal, but you know what? It's nature, and at least they have the resources there that they can go and make their nests. I have done a little bit of work though to these birch trees this year. And the reason for that is I find the canopy was just that little bit too low, which meant that it was starting to hang over the grass a little bit and it was making it a little bit harder to access those beds. So what I've done is I've gone for a crown lift. I've taken some of the lower branches off just to lift that height of the canopy and it gives me two benefits. For starters, it's not hanging over the lawn and the bed, but secondly, it allows us to really see those brilliant trunks. So we've come across to the other side of the front garden to quickly talk about this tree. This is our ornamental crab apple. This is another brilliant performer of a tree. It's absolutely massive and although it doesn't look like much at the moment, it's kind of still fairly bare and brown. If you look up close, you can see it's starting to come back into life. Before long, I'd say only a matter of weeks, it's going to be covered in really pale pink flowers, just like apple blossom and then all the way through the winter, it'll be covered in leaves. Now, when it's in leaf, it's actually not that special looking. The leaves are very plain, but then come the autumn is when there really is such a brilliant show. It will be covered in bright yellow little small crab apples that I love and the birds love. So let's keep moving on. We're gonna go this way, down the side of the house and down to the back garden. So coming down from the front garden brings you to here, our big area of lawn. There's not an awful lot to say about this other than last year I kept it as a no-mow meadow. Mixed feelings about it, I'm gonna do a video in the next couple of weeks to talk about it. Now, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna keep moving on. Don't worry, we will be coming back here, but I think if I show you from another angle, it's gonna give away some of the stuff I've done. So we keep going this way down this side of the plot and it takes us down to the pond. So this is the pond area. It's about half the way down the back garden on the west side of the garden next to the hedge. And although we haven't visited or talked about here for quite a while, I've done a huge amount of work to really improve this area. Not so much the pond itself, it's looked after itself very nicely. I think helped in large part by the pond planting that I put in. It's keeping the nutrient levels under control so that the water is staying nice and clear and dark. 
and we have a return of lots of the wildlife that we had last year. The frogs are back. We've got frog spawn, so we're gonna have tadpoles, and all of that really helps to lift the level of biodiversity in the garden. That in turn then will help keep pests down, things like slugs, and that's gonna be very helpful for my veg garden that I'm building. And then the rockery around here, you may not notice a difference, but last year this area was seriously messy. It was overgrown, there were weeds, and it just looked really unkempt. So back in September, I got a very able helper, aka my mum. She came down and for three days we attacked this whole area, getting rid of everything unwanted and getting rid of all the weeds. What we have left though are the plants that I want to keep. Things like the primroses, the ferns, the foxgloves, and then what I'm going to do is increase the numbers of those plants. I've got foxgloves that are going to be going in here. I've got a whole load of ferns that are going to get planted around. And the idea is just to create a really nice, lush, naturalistic planting that at the same time isn't going to be particularly high maintenance. I have an idea that it's just going to look really nice and simple. Now, this isn't the only place that I've made a change next to the pond because I've made a really big change just over there. Check this out for a change, and to explain what was here, and more importantly, why it's not here anymore, let's cut back to a few days ago. So we've got about five or six of these really large cypresses in the garden. I think they could best be described as cypress mushrooms. Um, I'm not really a big fan of them, and realistically, I want to get rid of them all over time. However, I don't want to get rid of them all in one go, because I think it's going to make the garden look very empty and very flat. However, this one's gonna go. It does have one benefit, which is at the moment it creates a lovely little secluded corner just behind me where the bench is next to the pond, and that's really nice. However, it's got more downsides. It's really big, and because it's a cypress, it's really hard to try and reduce in size. If I cut into it too deep, it's not gonna regrow. There's very, very little green growth on the tips, and it's really, really tall. It's growing into the apple trees, which is less than ideal. So. This is gonna come out, but in its space, I'm gonna plant some nice shrubs and some more plants and bulbs, which will be lovely, I think. And also it's going to create a lovely sinuous bed that's gonna run round like this, round behind the bench under the apple tree, and then round to the far side of the pond. So I think it's gonna be a real improvement. So you can see it really is quite a change. And although it looks a little bit bare at the moment, I think the change is a really good one. It brings way more light and airflow into this area. I think the extra light is gonna be very beneficial for the pond. And I've already got a plan for how I'm gonna plant this up. The plan for the pond is for it to be really lush and naturalistic with foxgloves, ferns, and then some dark foliaged plants as well, just to give that little pop of color. So I've already bought a few of those. These are cotinus or smokebush with that dark reddy purple foliage. I'm gonna have at least one of those here. I'm also gonna then extend that planting from the pond round to here so that it looks lovely and cohesive. And when they finish flowering, all of these bulbs, I'm gonna lift them, divide them, and spread them through here as well. It's gonna be a bit of a project. It's gonna take me at least this year and next to even get something basically looking right, but I think it's a great change. And it's not just here where I've been removing stuff. Let's go and have a look just behind me because that's where I've been making the biggest changes to the garden recently. So most of the garden is surrounded by these really massive Leyland cypresses. And when I say big, I mean big. Like really, really big. But despite all of the shelter and privacy that they give, they also cast a huge amount of shade. In the summer, most of the back garden is quite shady once it hits the afternoon, and particularly in the winter, the garden is shaded for pretty much all of the day. Added to that, we live in a rural setting, and on the other side of these are beautiful fields, and it seems like such a shame to not get to see them. So, I've been busy. Have a look this way. And check it out, I've removed all of the Leyland cypresses from the back boundary of the garden, and a big job it certainly was, because rather than getting professional services in to do it, I did it myself along with a friend. It took us a very long time. Both of us were exhausted, and no wonder, each one of the Leyland cypress trees was probably about 30 foot, and this section is about 30 or 40 meters long. But what a difference it's made. 
If we were talking now, we'd be standing in deep shade. However, now you can see how much more light and airy and open it is. Best of all, it's opened up those views out over the countryside, which we can even appreciate from the house. I'm really delighted I've done it. I'm going to continue working my way around the garden over the next few years doing the same, but everything in good time. Now, it does look barren, but once I've cleared it, I'm going to be putting in new hedging. I haven't decided what I'm going with yet. I'm either going to go with a beech or a hornbeam, or I'm going to go with an edible hedge so that there'll be nuts and berries that not only I can harvest, but also the birds can enjoy as well. But it's not only here that this makes a big difference. Wherever you go in the back garden, you can see that difference. So let's go across to the other side of the garden where the vegetable garden is going to be, and I'll show you what a difference it makes over there. So we've come across to the other side of the garden now and we're in the area that I'm going to be turning into the veg garden, hopefully turning it into the veg garden very, very soon. This has been the epicentre for almost all of the work over the winter because I've really been working to make this area suitable for growing fruit and veg and that means I've needed to really up the amount of light that comes in. So you may remember back in January I made a video about bringing down a pear tree and an apple tree that ran just on the other side of this little hedge. That came out and it made a big improvement. Then I took out the Leyland cypresses behind and in fact I'm going to cut to a little bit of footage which will show you exactly what this was like before they came down and after they came down and you can see it really has just made the most massive difference. The final change I made was with this little hedge at the back or at least it wasn't little before I cut it down. I've taken more than half of the height out of it. Don't worry I'm not going to be leaving it like this. I just wanted to take the worst of the height before we hit spring when birds might be nesting in it. I wanted to get that done before that and it now means that as well as more light getting into this area you can see further down the garden and you can see where our polytunnel is. So down this side of the garden we basically have the veg garden area, the polytunnel and then at the back what I call the processing plant which is where we put all of our messy garden waste so that we can deal with it another time. It's been an absolutely massive amount of work to get through during the winter and although I haven't got the vegetable garden built yet what I have done is I've laid the foundations for what I think will be a successful vegetable garden. So now that all of that really big heavy work is done now I can start to focus on the nice stuff building the raised beds and actually turning this into the vegetable garden. So You've seen down this side of the garden, let's go back and we'll go to the main lawn and I'll show you looking back down the garden and the orchard. So now you can see why I was being coy about showing you more of this main grass area. I didn't want to give away the big reveal of how different the garden looks now that I've taken down those cypress hedges and check it out. If you compare it to what the garden looked like last year, versus this year it's such a difference. I love the change, I love how much more bright and airy and open it is and at the moment with all of the spring bulbs up it's looking really lovely. Now the orchard that sits in the centre of the garden it still hasn't come into leaf yet but that lets you appreciate the really old gnarled forms of each of the fruit trees and all of the daffodils underneath are really doing their thing at the minute. We have a huge number of them and whether they're white or yellow they look brilliant. You can see just behind me the bed that I opened up just in December just before Christmas and I planted tulips and other spring bulbs. It's looking nice. The tulips are coming up. They're still quite small at the moment and at the moment there's no sign of the frittle area or the anemones but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. This is also a really good vantage point to show you exactly where everything lies in the back garden. So off on this side we have the pond and then the back boundary of the garden doesn't actually run square it runs off at an angle all the way down to a point in the very far corner. We have the orchard that sits slap bang in the middle of the garden and then running down this side on the other side of that little brown beach hedge we have the vegetable garden space, we have the polytunnel and then the messy processing plant at the back. So hopefully this is giving you a really good idea not only of what the garden's like at this time of year but also exactly where everything lies so that as the year goes on and I'm showing you what I'm doing in different areas you'll understand exactly where they are. Now we're not done yet there's one more area to show you that's back around the front of the house. So we've headed back around to the front again and we're now on the other side of the driveway which you saw at the very start of the episode and we're on the eastern side of the plot and this is the secret garden. Now 
It is a lovely little special secluded place, full of lovely little corners and interesting plants, but I don't often film in here, mainly because as you can see, it's pretty cramped to try and get a camera plus me and then try and get everything into shot and working. Plus, parts of it are really, really shaded, while other parts are in really bright sun. But what we can do now is we can have a look around and I'll show you some of the really lovely things we have here. As soon as you come into the secret garden, you can hear the sound of water. And that's because we have a second little pond and it's just perfect. I really love it. We've got frogs here as well, which is brilliant. And then around it, there's just some basic planting actually. Uh, we've got some ferns, we've got some aquilegia, we've got some anemones. Now, you might see that this area is looking really a, a bit messy and that goes for the whole secret garden. I've been so busy down the back of the garden this year that really this area has had to fend for itself until now. So the next few weeks I'm going to have to really get stuck in and do some proper clearing, otherwise this is going to look really messy all summer. One of the brilliant things about the secret garden is it's filled with lovely specimen plants and trees like this. This is a magnolia stellata and I'd really hoped that it was going to come into flower in time for the video, but alas, nope, it flowers just that little bit later in the spring. You can see that the buds are forming, but they haven't opened yet. When they do, they've got beautiful little star-shaped pure white flowers. And what's lovely about this as well is that it's not a big shrub or not a big tree. This one is just really small and beautiful. Okay, so I know that the lighting in this shot is far from perfect, but I wanted to make sure that I got a chance to show off the tree behind me. This is what I believe is a Robinia pseudoacacia, and I think the form of it is just incredible. You can see low down where the trunks are, it's very bare, and now they're covered with mosses and things like that, but it's when you get higher that it gets really interesting. Rather than having either straight or wavy shaped branches, each of the little branches is kind of jointed, and what it creates is this really unusual looking form high up that you can see. Now when it's in leaf, it looks lovely, but for me it's now when the tree is bare that it really shows itself off. This is such a cool looking form to have in the garden. We've got a little hidden seating area underneath the Acer. You can see that the Acer hasn't come into leaf yet, but this area is sadly very neglected. Somebody, as in myself, didn't go around and collect the leaves last autumn, so I'm going to have to get stuck in because this area is starting to look really a bit tired. We've also got this as well, a lovely little small contorted willow that again has a really interesting habit in how it grows and at the moment it's in flower. I can't say that I ever would have really been particularly a fan of these, but now that I've got one myself, I love it. So that's pretty much everything in the secret garden and it also brings to an end the entire garden tour. I've really enjoyed showing you what the garden looks like this early in spring, when the trees still don't have their leaves, when the daffodils are in flower, and also it's been brilliant to be able to show you some of the big bits of work that I've been doing over the winter. Hopefully you find it useful being able to understand exactly where each of the bits of the garden are located. And I would love to hear from you. I always love hearing from you. So leave a comment down below if you'd like. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't already, subscribe and make sure to hit that bell icon because that way you'll be notified when I post my next video. And until next time, see you later.